Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about optimal training versus efficient training because this is something that we need to understand. It's something that we need to talk about uh, when we're thinking about our own training goals and what it is that we're trying to do. And, and I think people need to grasp that there's an enormous difference between the two in terms of philosophy because oftentimes when we start talking about things like minimalist training, for example, that is about training efficiency, right? It's about training efficiency. In other words, uh, depending upon your goals and depending upon your lifestyle, you may have a limited amount of recovery resources, you may have a limited amount of time, and maybe your goals are not to achieve 100% of your possible results, right? If you're not going to compete in anything, that's going to be the first thing I'm going to say. If your income is not tied to your results in any way, or you are not competitive in any way, um, I would honestly say that spending a lot of time worried about optimal training is, is probably not really that great of an idea. Let's just call it what it is. Uh, because the question comes down to, are you willing to double your allocation of resources for a 1% or a 2% better outcome? Right? Are, are you happy with 80% of the best possible results you could get? 90%, 95, 98? And that's an important question to ask, and you've got to ask how much further are you willing to go in terms of getting that next 20%, 10%, or 1% more progress toward, towards your goals. You know, what are you willing to sacrifice for it? Um, and, and it is something that we have to think about, and there's no shame in saying, hey, I'm not interested in optimal training. Uh, because a lot of what I've done and promoted for you guys is about training efficiency in the past. In other words, can you get the most muscle, the most strength, the most benefit out of every hour that you spend in the gym per week? Because that, that is about efficiency, right? It's about efficiency. And you know what's efficient? Working really hard on five or six exercises, right? Putting all of your eggs in one basket and spending most of your time, particularly your first few years in the gym, Training five or six basic exercises with maybe a little bit of supplemental work is needed, some exercise variation is needed, and coming in and uh, getting as good as you can at those. And the strength standards I set is what people need to remember. Like my strength standard comes up all the time. My big five standard. That can be achieved with efficient training, not optimal training. Optimal training is not necessary for that. And that's a big distinction that we need to make. Uh, because, you know, a lot of people will say, well, I think that strength standards is insane. You can't expect person X, Y, or Z to hit that. I'm like, yeah, I totally can. It's going to take a few years. That can be done with efficient training. You can come in and do less than a dozen exercises your entire training career and hit those goals and still be pretty big, pretty jacked, pretty strong, right? You can do those things. That can be done with efficient training. That doesn't require an enormous time commitment. You know, you could come in and train four hours a week and reach those goals. And the ironic part is that there's so many people who think they're training optimally in some way, and that's the hilarious part, and then they, they think those goals are difficult to reach. And that should tell you a lot about just how unoptimal their training is, because that can be done with efficient training. And it's because too many people worry about what they think is optimal instead of going, hey, man, am I even covering the basics? Have I even mastered the basics before I'm working on all this finesse stuff and weak point training and everything else when the glaring weakness is that, I don't know, their squat and their deadlift is their weak point. You know, if you have a big exercise as a weak point or a major muscle group that's a weak point or two major muscle groups that's a weak point, maybe your pecs and your hamstrings, you know, something, whatever, your back and your quads, all right, you've got a problem You've got a problem if you're in that situation. Uh, you probably need to be not even thinking about optimal at that point and be thinking about efficient because you, you're not even making good use of your time in any way. You might be spending extra time in the gym and not be making even remotely good use of any of it. And for anyone who, for example, thinks that my, my strength standards are, you know, unusual or, or impossible or unrealistic, uh, I'm going to say to them, maybe they need to be thinking about exercise efficiency because it shouldn't take you that big of a time commitment every week to reach those goals. It just takes some consistency and progression. So we come down to efficiency. In other words, how much muscle and strength and everything else can you gain for the amount of time you spend in the gym? 
And that is where minimalist training comes in. And minimalist meaning minimalist and exercise selection. It doesn't mean you're not doing 10 or 12 sets of that lift every week. You might be doing 12 sets of squats, 12 sets of benching, 10 sets of weighted chin-ups, right? Fair amount of volume, you could be doing all that, and that's still minimalist. But it's again, it's about efficiency. So what's the alternative? Well, it's optimal. Optimal training is coming in and saying, I'm going to allocate as many resources as is required to get 3% better results, right? In my case, I mean, look at what I'm doing. I'm rotating through a fairly complex training system. Uh, my workouts are a lot longer. They're usually twice as much time. If you just look at the number of work sets that get filmed every week on camera with my own workouts, they're running 17, 18 minutes plus just for work sets for every workout not even counting warm-ups, no warm-ups are being filmed. You know, that's four days a week and that's not counting the stuff off camera. All right, now we're dealing with what's, what's optimal. What's every single weak point? What are all my weakest muscles? Am I willing to dedicate an extra hour every week to a weak point? Normally a whole workout might be an hour, right? I mean, someone might be coming in and training three days a week for an hour, four days a week for an hour. When you're now going to the point of saying, I need to dedicate an extra hour every week to this weak point and another hour every week to this weak point, that's the entirety of an entire workout's worth of time dedication. Because you are realizing that if that weak point comes up, you'll get a little better progress. You've got to work on these various weak points, whether it's in a strength curve or a muscle. And there's a big difference between saying what's well, optimal versus what's efficient what's good use of your time versus what is going to give you the maximum progress and so for me right now i've switched over in that other direction but this is something i've talked about in the past because people forget they forget a lot that there have been periods of time where i was doing 30 sets of squats in a week you guys forget about that yeah i was doing 30 sets of squats in a week and still managing to squeeze in curls Back when I was competing, you know, back when I was competing last, but um, I'm back in that mindset now, and that's what I'm doing. And I think people need to understand it's, it's in this case, it's not necessarily about even what people would call flip flopping. It's about understanding goals. It's about understanding uh, time commitment, resource commitment, everything else. Because when you start training optimally, you're now looking at stuff like two. How can I optimize my recovery? How can I optimize my lifestyle to work around this optimal training? And that's a different animal completely. And I can tell you one thing, uh, you might be able to train optimally for your life circumstances, but it doesn't mean it's gonna be optimal. What do I mean? You have a career and a three month old baby. That's a perfect example. You have a career, a wife and a three month old baby you cannot train optimally. That's just not going to happen. You're in a life situation to where you need to be saying no matter how important your goals might be to you for training, you might need to be thinking in terms of efficiency at that point because you have a lot of responsibilities outside of your training. Training optimally for your life circumstance is not the same as optimizing everything because for truly optimal training, where we no longer care about efficiency, where you don't care about efficiency at all. You will adjust your lifestyle to optimize your optimal training. And so that's what I mean when we talk about allocation of resources and saying there's no shame in saying I'm not interested in optimal training because I have a job and a baby and a wife or I have a, you know, a very serious career that requires me to work overtime or I'm working and going to school. Right? Optimal is not, is not even on in the cards for you. You need to be thinking in terms of efficiency. But when you don't have all those extra responsibilities and maybe you're gonna compete or your career is tied to your training results in some regard, and I didn't even specify what sort of results, that's when you have to step back and say, okay, it's my job or it's my competitive environment and therefore I have to be more optimal. And that's a different way to look at it. 
You know, and for me, I had to actually switch that based upon my life circumstances and things that were happening outside of the gym off the camera uh, affected me on in that in a lot of ways when I was actually having to focus on efficiency. All right. But that's the question we have to ask. There's a difference between efficient and optimal. And when you're looking at your training goals, you have to ask that question of what's more important to you right now with your goals and your lifestyle. Efficiency or optimization? And there's no right or wrong answer. It depends upon your specific circumstances. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.